I would play with. Yeah. Good? Yeah. So that's the hind feet. Let's work now on hobbling. All right. So above anything is that we have taught before that a horse can connect to multiple things. They can connect to other horses, they can connect to the environment or the environment that they're familiar with. They can connect to patterns, they can connect to objects and they can connect to aids, right? Like they can connect to the aid of a rope can mean either relax or respond. The aid of your leg can mean either relax or respond. So what we're gonna do here is to try to get her to connect to the aid of the hobble and also to the object of the hobble. They start to learn that when the hobble's on that they start to have like um, almost a placebo effect in the sense of when they feel the hobble's on, it feels really content and calm and peaceful. Rather than when humans put them under restraint without teaching or educating the horse what that pressure means, it instills fight and flight rather than instilling um, seeking of relief, okay? So what we're gonna start with is I'm just gonna make a little loop out of my rope here using a bowline. If you're not sure what a bowline is, you can just look up a bowline knot. Or you can use the loop on a rope, a Honda. Your clip's okay, but you clip something that can be a little bit sharp for them, so I prefer to use the, the soft end of the rope like this. And the first thing I'm gonna teach the horse is that if I have no intent in my body and I put pressure on this rope, I want the horse to not ignore it, but I want the horse to realize that I'm not asking the foot to move. So if you had a horse that when you put steady pressure on this rope, they automatically wanted to yield their foot, which is what most people would teach the horse to do with this type of a rope feel, is you would hold it there and the horse would move the leg around and then when they put their leg on the ground and loaded the foot, you release. So I'm gonna start teaching the horses that when I have no intent to move the foot, I wanna to get to where they could, they could almost take my body weight. So there she moved, I'm gonna hold it. There she started to load the foot she started to put her body weight on it and I'm going to release. I would just call it like grounding the foot. When the horse grounds the foot, they get released because my intent is not to have the foot move. My intent is have the foot what? L load. Yeah. Right? So load the foot. See the weight's coming off the foot. Like she just rocked to her right. I wait until I feel her rock back to her left. and release. Now that was really subtle, but she just went, I think I'm gonna weight that foot. Now I'm gonna lean back and see if she can take more weight. Good, I want her to go, when you put that feel on my leg, you can't move me. So this is what I would refer to as a relaxed rope. Okay, I'm gonna back her up there, using some rhythm. Place the foot, ready? I want that to be a relaxed rope and release. Now I want it to be a responsive rope. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put energy in my body. I'm gonna turn the electric fence on. This is the fence is off. So horses learn that when the electric fence is off is to lean. Now people will confuse this and go, you've said before, don't let a horse lean on pressure. She's not leaning on pressure. What I'm doing is I'm telling her to let, uh, to like hold the pressure, all right? If I then pick my energy up and ask her to move, then I don't want her anymore to lean on the pressure. So if I lift my energy up and I put electric, electricity in my body, and now I'm gonna have this feeling of going, I want you to move your foot. Okay, now she's gotta, cla she's gotta make sure that she's awake to clarify this, and then I'm gonna release. So now I want her to move that foot, ready? I'm gonna put a feel on the rope. My, my thoughts are, is that this feeling is trying to tell you to move the foot. Now I'm gonna turn my life off again. So I've just gone from a responsive rope back to a what? A relaxed rope. And that means now load the foot and don't move it. This is really subtle communication, but this is not hard for the horses to decipher. It's just really hard for the humans to decipher. So this is the first time I've played her with her with this. But on my horses at home, 
I can have no intent in my body and I can lean my whole body weight on the rope and they won't move the foot. But then I come in and go, now my intent is that I want you to move that foot. And see, she's just gone a little bit sleepy there. She's not really going, what feeling is that? So if that's not responding, I might pick up my lead and just go, yeah, it's that. Now this is the follow the feel, this is the follow the feel or the, the, the responsive rope. Come on, this is the responsive rope. This is the responsive rope, good. Put your foot back. This is the responsive rope, you ready? I want you to respond to this feel. I want you to respond to this feel. See, she's not gonna have any trouble with the hobbling because she's pretty adapted to the re relaxed leg to where she's almost a little bit dull to the responsive, sorry, the relaxed rope. that yeah yeah this is just this is just really creating more communication is it's not about how hard the pressure is on the rope it's trying to get her to know when i put that feel down the rope that i want you to offer that feel like you've seen you know a lot of horsemen do with the with their lariats and stuff that's really amazing to teach horses to handle pressure and let you follow in a feel and all those sorts of things but if i can instill that when they feel the hobbles, that they automatically just load their front feet and they go really sort of sleepy and docile about the hobbles, is that when you put the hobbles on, that the horse automatically has this emotional response to, oh, I guess it's time to go to sleep, yeah? So we're training the, emotion, we're training the emotions as much as we are the feet. So this is a responsive leg, that was good. She kind of went a little for the flies, but I'll take it. This is a responsive rope. Ready? Good. Put it back. This is a relaxed rope. Good. We've all done it with tools. Like I see people kind of go, oh, that'll confuse them. But then they'll get a flag out and they'll go, when I do this with no energy in my body, the horse should be fine with it. But if I lift up my intent and do it with the flag, the horse should respond. Tell me the difference. There isn't. We do it with our stick. We rub them with a stick. We lift our intent up. We drive them with the stick. We press them with the stick. That means yield. The next time we touch them with the stick, it means friendly game. It's all about the intent and it's not about the rope. Okay? Now she's making this look pretty straightforward. There's gonna be horses that are gonna find the relaxed leg or the relaxed rope concept difficult. You're gonna put steady pressure on it and they're gonna either try fighting the rope or they're gonna to try to, um, you know, they're gonna constantly, as soon as they feel pressure, wanna to yield to the pressure of the rope. So this is really important that with horses like that, that you just put a little bit less pressure on and you recognize that the moment that they load that leg that you release load that leg and then release. So she's going to be more apt to load the leg and find it a little bit harder to be responsive to the rope rather than a really more right brain or a more sensitive horse is going to be a little bit more apt to want to respond to the rope and find it a little bit harder to let you just load the leg and lean on the rope. Yeah? Neither of them are right or wrong. It's just trying to get the horse to understand the intent of one versus the intent of another. So it's just a little bow tie so it doesn't tighten up too much on the, or a bow line I should say, doesn't tighten up on the foot. Right, so let's start with the responsive leg. I want her to respond to that. Good. I want her to respond to that. Good, right? Back her up a little. Now I want her to relax to that. Whoop, so there she confused it, just wait when she loads that foot, back it off. So now I've done a little bit of responsive rope, she's, she's kind of, her mind's a little on that, but I want her to really read me and go, has Sam got the, don't worry about the rope and just let me lean on it feel, 
whoop, no, nope, she's in responsive mode. That's okay. Just wait till she loads that foot and release. But when she, when she loads that foot, release. Now the next thing I would like is that she's loading the foot, but I want her to come down into the balance box just a little bit more. So I'm gonna put steady pressure on that rope. And when she thinks, when she stops moving her feet, don't go forward, and she lowers her head, watch, when she thinks down. So I want her to load the foot. There's a little change, you see that? Wasn't much, but she put her head down. Now she shook the flies, but I'm gonna still take it. I don't want her to think that I missed that. Steady pressure, load the leg, drop the pole. I want her head down, I'm thinking I want her head down. Add a little bit more steady pressure. This is the relaxed one. Release. This is the relaxed one. Hear that? Now some people might not look at might look at that and not see that as such a big deal, but like if I've got tons of pressure on her leg and I'm not asking the leg to move and she blows out or lowers her head and gets real sleepy, there we go, with the feet. In a minute here, she's not gonna be able to do that with the flies, is she? So she needs to get to be prepared to be really grounded. I'd like her to lower her head just a little bit more. Put more pressure on the rope to bring her mind back there. So when she looked away, I just pulled harder on the rope, not to get her foot to move, but to get her to bring her attention back to the follow and the feel. So the next thing I do is I go around. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rope. So I'm gonna square her feet up. That was good, wasn't it? Straight over the top of it. I'm gonna square her feet up. There, a bit more like that. And now what I'm going to do is go around the front of the leg and I'm going to come back underneath itself. So I've not, I've not put it over, I've not gone over the top so that if she really needed to and she steps that foot up, it's just going to drop out. The rope's just going to drop out from underneath the bottom of the foot. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of pressure on these legs and I'm going to see if she can get her to respond and feel the pressure and then halt. Now I'm going to do the relaxed leg. I want her to load both feet, take my weight, and release. Now the next stage, which she's loading the feet, right? That's the first stage. The next stage is that she gets kind of really nice and still with her feet loaded. And then the third stage would be that she what? She dropped her head a little more in the balance box. As soon as that she felt she looked up and I put that level of steady pressure on both of her legs, she got real sleepy about it. Now, just to make sure that she's not zoned out, I'm just gonna add a little bit of rhythmic pressure with my halter and lead, and just get her to move her feet. Now, stop the feet, stop the feet, hold them there, hold them there, till she finds relaxation. It'd be good if she dropped a pole down. What, she's looking away, I'm gonna pull more on the foot. When her mind comes back, when her mind comes back to the rope, and her head pole softens, you watch, just wait for her pole. Wait for her pole. There's a change. See her head go down? Just the little things, watch. So that she starts to, there it is. See if she's able to get, there it is. All right, now we'll leave her. That was really good. When her mind goes, watch steady pressure on the rope, watch her brain, watch her mind to the left, down, goes away. Have you had her hobble, Joe? No, she's done Yep. <laughs> Good. So let's just test it a little bit more here. Let's keep steady pressure on that rope. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna make sure I'm not sneaking around, and that's another thing with the trailer loading often, is that people put them in the trailer, 
and then they quietly, quietly shut the ramp and they sneak around them. And then as soon as you drive off, the trailer goes across the road and makes all these noises. And we haven't prepared them for commotion. So I need to make sure that if I put steady pressure on her here and she yields her feet, you see, you can see her now, like she's shifting her weight around, but she's pretty reluctant to pick up those legs. That felt good. She had a little feel. There, she softened her nose down. I love it. And I come in here. I'm gonna get busy. Make sure that none of this stuff's bothering her. If you've got a horse that can't handle just motion in general, then don't put the hobbles on them because what you'll have to do is you'll have to creep around again to make sure that they're not losing confidence. Cool. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna leave her there for a sec with her ropes. See, she was a bit more connected to me. Now this is gonna be a challenge because she's gonna try stepping on those ropes, good. I'm gonna move away, keep steady pressure on them. See if her thoughts stay down. Good, we're gonna come in. Now the pro, this would work fine for ground tie. This is the same process for just teaching horses to ground tie. You could take the ropes off and back them and just teach them to stay, stay put. The beauty with the hobbles though, is it can give the horse this instant, when they feel them go on, that they just have this big <sighs> adrenaline release and they learn to stand and be really relaxed and composed about it. They come in here, move around her, retreat. Now I'm gonna test, do I still have the feel? That was even a better response than the, than the last one. I'm gonna back her weight off her, just to her back her hind feet off a little bit there. Get her brain down, watch her mind, watch her mind. There's a little change. Bring her mind back when that horse looks, when she looks at that other horse. Waiting for her mind, waiting for her mind. Release, head down. This is a test though, isn't it? There's a horse over there loping around. Needs a bit more friendly game with his blanket by the look of it. Release. That was, re ah, that was really good. So she got a little drawn to the attention of the other horse, didn't she? Like we said, horses can connect to other horses. They can connect to environments. They can connect to patterns. They can connect to objects, which are the hobbles. And they can connect to a yield. When she looked away, I've taught her that when I put that aid on, that that aid means whew, relax. Let's see if I can get her brain back, watch. See how little it takes? Now she's just a little bit low. I want her to come up just above her knees. There. Wait till they're a bit closer together. There, relax. Now relax, relax Rain, excellent. She looks pretty good, hey? Now, when I, go to, when I go to take the horses, the rope or the hobble or anything off, I slide that out. I make sure everything's off their legs. And then what I do is I just gently walk them off to the side before I go forward because I've just instilled that you've been restrained, you know, that there's gonna be a little bit of confusion around whether the hobble's on or the feel is on. So if you just, just make sure every time before you go to mount or anything like that, is that you just bring them off center and then walk off. Because if you go to walk off and horses are unsure about those hobbles being on, you'll, you'll lose a bit of their confidence. Okay? <clears throat> I like to use these. To start with, these are what we would call dinner hobbles or knee hobbles, you can put them on above the knees, which allows the horse just a little bit of movement with their lower leg if you were gonna allow them to graze and things. But personally, I probably like them more around the bottom of the fetlocks because I've just taught the horse that that particular feel of the hobbles is instilling relaxation. This one's got a, a loop, like a little, um, a D, little D ring here in the center. This is for then also tying uh, on a rear leg hobble as well, so that the, you can tie onto that to prevent horses basically from having very minimal movement. Now, when you see overnight hobbles, they'll have a length of chain in them. 
Now they're not better or worse, but they give the horse a little bit more freedom. So when you put overnight hobbles on, they are for overnight so that horses can travel, some pretty athletic horses can still travel up to a mile overnight with a set of overnight hobbles on. But your dinner time hobbles, or your knee hobbles, they're really optimum for about 25 to 30 minutes, really, because then what horses will need is they'll need to start moving their feet to get the blood flow and all that back to their front legs. Because they typically won't stand dead square themselves for sort of more than longer than 20 to 25 minutes. So that's just an important thing to consider too. All right, but very soft. This is a double stitch Herman Oak leather with a, with a bit of seat belt material in between it so that if they kick it or scratch it or whatever, it doesn't lose its strength and its integrity. And it also just stays really, really supple and soft, right? So I'm gonna step her up and we're just gonna put her in this and see how she goes. Because she's in a good frame of mind She's yielding responsively. She's not act, she's got, not got any real reactive behavior and she seems really relaxed. So I have it to where this loop goes out the back towards the back feet. You come in between the front feet, you make a wrap, you go through the first loop and then you come back through it, it's the second loop before you snatch it around the legs. And we'll just put it on reasonably soft here to start with. What I'll do is I'll just gently put a little feel on her here and let her know that she's now wearing the bind. She's already been considerate. Balance box, good. Little feel backward. Beautiful. All right. Now we're going to let her have a bit of placement. Now I don't even mind. I'm just going to wait till she relaxes. I don't mind if she wants the graze, but just for the just for the time being, I want to make sure that she's quite still in the mind. She's just exploring. But if I've set this up, it shouldn't really create any major fight or flight. Some horses still will, that's just the nature of the prey animal. But what happens is when they get in that situation is if you can just travel with them and just gently put a, gen a feel on their lead rope, and once they find standstill, the biggest challenge is to not just run over there and try to get them off because you're worried that they're gonna do it again. But try, try to wait till the horse has a moment of relaxation before you give them a retreat, yeah? Let's just play around here with her for a little bit. Let her experiment, I'm gonna wander in. Play my friendly games. Now another thing is once you've got horses in the hobbles, is this is a really important part from a a body control part of, of yourself, is that when, I'm, when I've got horses in hobbles, I've got to really make sure that I've got this clean disconnect, okay? She thought a little bit about moving her feet, but she didn't think about coming with me. One of the worst things you can do is when you're trying to leave a horse in hobbles is go, because that actually has a drawing effect. The horse is kind of going, are, are you telling me to come or not come? The best way really, if you're learning this, is to come in rub them on the withers once you've got the hobbles on, is leave off the back hip so that you don't encourage any draw, okay? Given her plenty of light range and wide berth, I'm trying not to, um, I'm not trying to influence her personal bubble in any way, but she knows that I'm still available. And then as they get better like this, you leave them out into the open for longer. You leave their lead rope on the ground, you can allow them to graze, you keep a bit of an eye on them, but you just slowly build up more and more of this placement. And what placement is, is placement is teaching the horses to psychologically kind of fall in love with where they're standing. They learn to fall in love with the post where they get tied up. They learn to find relief and fall in love with being in the trailer. So she'll just start to get to where as soon as she has the hobbles on, they just have this sense of relaxation. You'll see them yawn. Some horses will move a little bit like her. She's a little bit more extroverted. But if we give her a minute here, I reckon it won't take very long before she'll have that real sleepy appeal about her. She'll seem real quiet and docile. And then when she gets like that, that's when you would go over and, and untie her. Okay? But she's well and truly ready to be in those now. She's just got to spend time now trying to find the limit of how much she can move, she knows they're there. There was a little change. She just had a bit of a big sigh there. You watch, she might even have a little yawn here. 
I think more than anything, she's moving just because she's trying to move the flies. I think if there was no flies here, she'd almost go dead still. But can you guys see, balance box, there's the yawn coming. Yeah, all right. Left brain, grounded, no fear response, all responsive elements of relaxation, right? Who can see that she's aware that they're on, but she's not crazily bothered and upset, and she's just exploring what boundary that has to offer, right? And I really think it's just the flies that are giving her a little bit more trouble. Hear that? Here comes the yawn again. This is great though. Like, she, imagine if every time you put the hobbles on, your horse had a huge adrenaline release and, and got relaxed and went, oh great, this is when I get to just like go to my little happy place. It's like almost, um, you know, you see you can buy these weighted blankets and stuff for people that have anxiety and things. I mean, people look at the hobbles and our fear almost uh, exacerbates the issue by seeing horses that are not prepared that don't understand the difference between relax and responsive behavior, they've still got reactive behavior, and people strap them on and just let them fight for their life. I don't want them to do that. I don't want to injure a really well-talented bred horse that I've just developed, but I want him to go in the hobbles. This is how I would do it by being careful and cautious about their emotional state, but also teaching them that the hobbles can be a place of placement, which means relaxation, which means a bit of me time, yeah? Got my hobbles on, right? And and I've seen, I've seen, I've seen some of the really like pushiest and resistant and fearful horses learn to accept this, and it completely changed them. Have them just go. I realise I live in a domestic environment. Boundaries are necessary to fences, to trailers, to floats, to. Um, cinches to other horses and all that sort of stuff and the better that you set them up the more they're going to be able to stay sound and emotionally fit in a domestic environment good it's not too scary is it if you're still unsure about when to put them on just spend a little bit more time with those like the lead rope just around the leg and keep exaggerating the pressure of the responsive rope and then the, then the pressure of the relaxed rope and see if the horse just has a very clear definition. When you're certain that you can put a feel on the rope and that horse goes, that one means move, and then the next one you stay really relaxed in your posture and you can lean your whole body weight against the leg and the horse just loads it and goes, you can't move me. And now you can't move me on this leg. And then they lock down both front legs and you go to untie the, ho untie the hobbles and the horse goes, he goes, I don't know, I'm not moving until you step them off and then they free up and away they go. All right, it's just education. It's just schooling. Yeah? It's also your feel of the release. So, yeah, I've, I've struggled to really get the clarity between, I've, I didn't struggle with the, um, the relaxed one, it's the responsive one. Yes. And it's like, well, either is fine if that's what we're doing. Correct. Doing Correct. Once, once either is fine, the horse should be able to determine. So you watch her, just here, just give them the moment. It's changed, right? Let's just have a quick look at that back leg once more and then we're, when we're done. 